the rocket expansion didn't really change the overall layout of the TCG very much when it was released. However, one thing that it did change a lot was it increased the importance and focus on sleep as a special condition. So here's a deck that is centered all around putting your opponent's Pokemon to sleep and taking advantage of that. To be more specific, it was mainly two cards. One of them was the trainer card, Sleep! Because it could automatically put your opponent to sleep off of a coin flip. And then also the Drowsy in this set uh, because of long distance hypnosis. This Drowsy was great because its abilities could stack. If you had four of them on your bench, you had four chances to put your opponent to sleep. Putting your opponent to sleep could shut down abilities that some really important cards in the format had, like Blastoise and Venusaur. That way you could inadvertently shut down the entire process that made that archetype good. But you could also stall out your opponent and keep them from attacking you that turn, and multiple turns if they continuously flip tails and their active does not wake up. But one of the problems with Rocket's Drowsy and its long distance hypnosis is that if you flip tails on that coin flip, you put your own active to sleep instead of your opponent. So this could be problematic, unless your active cannot be put to sleep. And that is where Jungle Snorlax comes into play and finally finds some usefulness in this format. Snorlax has the ability Thick Skin, which keeps it from getting any special condition. The only way you could give Snorlax a special condition is if you shut its ability down with something like Goop Gas Attack, then you could give it one, and then this ability would stop working. But that's about all this Snorlax really has going for it. Its attack costs 4 energy for 30 damage, its retreat is atrocious, it has a weakness to fighting, Honestly, this fat piece of shit doesn't have much going for it other than its inability to fall asleep when it's your active, which is pretty ironic for a Snorlax. But when you pair it with something like Base Set Haunter that can take advantage of your opponent's active being asleep and yours not, then you can really get the ball rolling. Base Set Haunter has a great attack. 50 damage for 2 energy is great. The only caveat being that your opponent has to be asleep. However, with the combined powers of Rocket Drowsy and the Sleep Trainer card, that should not be a problem. And that is where this deck strategy comes in. So let's chit chat about it. So I'll start out with a playset of the Fossil Ghastly. It's much better than the base set Ghastly. Uh, you can oftentimes get off a Lick Attack, do a little bit of damage. Uh, HP is a bit higher, so it's more usable. And the base set Haunter, which has the hypnosis attack for if you want to try to keep your opponent asleep between turns. Uh, but if not, you have the sleep trainer card and also the rocket drowsy. Mainly you'll be using that dream eater attack on repeat. So and then also you'll be running a playset of the rocket drowsy so that you can fill up your bench with them. Four drowsy on your bench means that you have four chances to put your opponent to sleep. If you accidentally put yourself to sleep, that's fine because you have the jungle Snorlax that cannot be put to sleep. So the main strategy is going to be to keep that Snorlax out. Uh, you're not going to be putting energy on it too often. So you'll just use the Drowsy's long distance hypnosis, try to put your opponent to sleep. Any failed attempts aren't going to affect the Snorlax. So either way, you will be able to attack with it. Uh, this deck does run... Uh, double colorless so you can get off the body slam even though it's not a great attack the sleep trainer card or should I say sleep as it is pronounced by the title of the card and also professor oak be running three of those just for draw power so that you can fill your hand up early game get those drowsies on the bench uh, get a couple ghastly set up to evolve into haunters uh, the ideal for matchups is going to be starting with your Snorlax because it has such high HP for a basic. Uh, just in case you run into things like other stall walls like Chansey or a Lickitung. Plus powers in there to add a couple damage on a Dream Eater. You're looking for that 70 damage sweet spot to knock out things like Hitmonchan, Electabuzz, Magmar. And then switch to help out with Snorlax's high retreat cost. Four energy is not worth ever retreating. You're going to have to wait out those switches. And energy removal to help stall out while you're getting set up. If you have a Snorlax as your active, 
Uh, you can energy removal on your opponents while you wait out those double colorless energy coming your way. And whenever your Snorlax takes some damage, you can potion some energy off of it. Haunter also doesn't have very high HP, uh, so you can heal some damage off of that if you'll think it'll be beneficial. I don't find her just to get things back. Mainly Switch and Plus Power. Late game, you won't be using Sleep as much. You'll be relying on those Drowsies a lot more since they'll be on your bench if they haven't been drawn out by Gust of Wind and knocked out already. Nightly Garbage Run helps you get back those basics and recycle some of your cards to keep you from decking out if you get put in a position where you have to use your Professor Oaks too much. Because uh, you notice this deck doesn't really run Beal. You can usually get what you need pretty quick just using Professor Oak because uh, there's not too many technical cards that you need to combo off of each other. The main strategy is going to be keeping that Snorlax out there early, putting your opponent to sleep to stall out a bit, and then using Switch to swap out with a Haunter mid-game and start dealing high damage with Dream Eater over and over again. Run it out with four double colorless energy. That way you can power up a body slam pretty quick. It's not very high damage, but it can come in useful whenever you have that Snorlax active. And then 12 psychic energy. That way you can keep using Dream Eater. And just in case uh, you get hit with a bunch of energy removals, you can recover pretty quickly from that since it's only a two energy attack. So in theory, this deck works pretty great. You can keep your opponent asleep meaning that they can't attack you. Meanwhile, you're dealing little bits of damage, sometimes huge chunks of damage if you're using Haunter's attack. However, the challenge is keeping your opponent asleep because between each turn, they get to flip a coin. That's where you're going to be using Item Finder to reuse those sleep trainer cards and just using long-distance hypnosis over and over again. That's why the Snorlax is important in this deck is because the Haunter can be put to sleep if your long distance hypnosis from Drowsy backfires. Uh, and that makes the switch a little more important too. So you're having to recycle the switch. You're having to recycle the sleep cards. Uh, every now and then you're going to have to recycle a plus power to get off that extra chip damage. So if your opponent is hitting heads on those coin flips between turns, this deck can be a bit difficult to play. However, that is where the Sleep Trainer card helps out a lot. And one strength that this deck does have is that during the Rocket format, people were using Drowsy in almost every deck, and the Snorlax in this deck is immune to that. So you can shut down their strategy pretty quickly uh, because their Drowsy's long-distance hypnosis can't put your Snorlax to sleep. And if they put a Haunt to sleep, you can just switch into Snorlax, stall out a bit, switch back whatever you need to do. And you're not going to be running into other Snorlaxes that shut down your Drowsy because this is a rogue deck. It's not a major archetype of the time. You can kind of take this into a local tournament and people won't know what to expect. But this deck can get shut down other ways, such as running into Fossil Monk or Dark Vile Plume. Fossil Monk shuts down ability, so you can't really use Drowsy's Long Distance Hypnosis. And Dark Vile Plume shuts down the use of trainer cards, so that shuts down sleep. Now, at the time, some decks ran both of these. Uh, the control decks at the time that would run these to kind of limit what you could do on your turn. And would use things like energy removal and super energy removal to keep you from doing anything, really. But the Haunter does have Hypnosis for one Psychic Energy as a last-ditch effort to keep your opponent to sleep so that you can keep pulling off those Dream Eater attacks. Haymaker can also be a challenge for this deck. It can potentially two-hit KO a Snorlax uh, using Hitmonchan with a plus power on one turn. And also Electabuzz has the potential to paralyze a Haunter, which could in turn keep it from getting set up and using those Dream Eater attacks. However, Haunter does have a resistance to fighting, so there's always the potential to swap in and try to compensate for the weaknesses of the deck. And there is another version of this deck that had some use during the Prop 15 era and even onto the Rocket On format, uh, which used Rocket Snorlax. And Rocket Snorlax had an ability that if it was asleep and your opponent attacked it, it would automatically deal 20 damage to your opponent. This card also had an attack for 3 energy, which is 
a bit less. It dealt 20 damage and would put Snorlax to sleep automatically so that you could more uh, effectively keep Snorlax asleep on your opponent's turn if you actually got tells on the coin flip and deal that 20 damage or stall them out if they're afraid of taking that 20 damage. And this worked in conjunction pretty well with Haunter and the Jungle Snorlax uh, because you could use as many Rocket Snorlax and Jungle Snorlax up to four as you wanted because they technically had different names. And I didn't think it would be worth the time to make a completely separate video. Basically, if you're using Rocket Snorlax in conjunction with the same Haunter, Jungle Snorlax, and Drowsy, you're running more of a stall strategy, so you'll be running more energy removal, super energy removal, other stall cards just to keep your opponent going, uh, make them afraid to attack you in fear of that 20 damage, and make them deck out. And you wouldn't be using cards like Bill or Professor Oak. Uh, you'd probably be running a full play set of Notley Garbage Run just to stall out your opponent a bit more. If you're wanting to make the build a little more disruptive or offensive, or you can substitute out those potions for super energy removal or something like goop gas attack. You can also substitute them for full heals. That way you can keep the haunters out longer. And just in case you accidentally... Uh, by chance put your haunter to sleep you can just use full heal so that you can still have your opponent asleep and use dream eater on the same turn the only reason i don't use full heal in this build is because i have a full play set of switch and then i also have a full play set of sleep and four rocket drowsy so i'm pretty sure i'm able to put my, com my opponent to sleep consistently without too many worries and if you're worried about hyper-offensive decks getting the jump on you early game and get the ball rolling themselves before you can get set up, you can also run last in this deck. That way you can use the sleep card in your hand. You can maybe use a switch or a plus power just to empty out your hand of trainers and then play last. That way you can make sure your opponent is getting rid of whatever energy removals or plus powers or Professor Oaks that are in their hand that'll help them get set up faster than you because this deck can run a bit slow. And that's all I've got for this deck today is a bit of an interest piece from from back in the day. So let me know what you think about this deck down in the comments and in the spirit of this deck, keep it sleepy and creepy. You know, because there's a, a Snorlax and, and a ghost in this deck.